Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new week of the Live with Rank show. I am Rank, and I do appreciate you guys tuning in. Obviously, there's still a lot. It seems to be growing more and more to talk about every day, not only from a Michigan perspective, but the country perspective, and uh, obviously world perspective. Let's start off the, the day with, and the week, with a little bit of good news. The NFL has announced in a memo to their teams that nearly all of their COVID protocols will be lifted for the 2022 season. That means no more mask, no more test, no more tracking devices, no more contract tracing, no more quarantining in hotels, and a return to normal in almost all ways. Now, the memo cites the declining rates of COVID-19 for their decision, but also says teams must still comply with all state and local laws. So that's what I got for good news for the week. The horrible things are still occurring in Russia by what I I am truly surprised. I did believe that Russia would be a professional army. Uh, They apparently are not. Uh, They are a ragtag team of not to be, you know, underestimated, but uh, just killers. They're allowing people to escape and then bombing those routes. They're killing men, women, and children. Now I've seen proof of it, seen the video. They're bombing schools. They're bombing hospitals. They're bombing uh, uh, apartment buildings. That's what I wanted to say. And more. We'll certainly get into that coming up during the show. But as I always like to do, start off with some Michigan news. I saw a piece over the weekend published in, I believe it was the Detroit News, from the AP. And it motivated me to start writing notes on what I wanted to talk about. And then that is what starts me thinking about maybe I would like to write a piece about it, depending on where that's going. And I did. I titled it, AP swoops in and uses the woman shield to protect Michigan Governor Whitmer. We should have seen this coming from a protect all women from their destructive policies mile away. With the upcoming gubernatorial election this fall and Governor Whitmer running with the baggage of her policies crushing businesses, families, children, and their education, the Associated Press is coming to her rescue. So I assumed this person wanted to or was assigned to come to the rescue of Whitmer. Now, mind you, the AP is supposed to be a news organization and not a protector or of all people who are Democrats. So keep that in mind. It's not an opinion source like my show. It's supposed to be a straight reporting organization, but it's not, and it hasn't been for years, so hopefully more of you will realize that. Now, it could not have been her destructive dictator-like executive orders and the policies that people did not like about Whitmer. No, it was because she is a woman. It had nothing to do with the shutting down most of our economy and keeping it shut down much longer than the science required. No, it was and is because she is a woman. It was not because of her executive order order 2020-50, quote, enhanced protections for residents and staff of long-term care facilities during the COVID-19 pandemic, end quote. No, 
It's because she's a woman. In that executive order, and there's a link in my piece at WBCKFM.com or the station you're listening to me, whatever station you're listening to me on, their website. In that order, it said, quote, a long-term care facility must not prohibit admission or readmission of a resident based on COVID-19 testing requirements or results in a matter that is inconsistent with relevant guidance issued by the Department of Health and Human Services, end quote. Again, many of you know this. This is the famous executive order in which the pen that signed it by Governor Whitmer has been dripping with blood ever since. Because over 6,000 nursing home residents, according to the state, and over 8,600, according to the Michigan Auditor General, were killed. Almost 30, 32% of all deaths. Because she sent COVID positive people back. Just like the mayor of New York to their nursing homes and demanded that they take those people back. So it had nothing to do with that. It's because she's a woman. Or Executive Order 202160 and 161, in which Whitmer ordered more businesses to shut their doors. Back in August of 2020, she ordered statewide indoor gatherings to be limited to 10 people and bars will be closed for indoor service across the state. No. It's because she was a woman. How about when she used Santa to frighten children to follow her rules? No, no, no. It's because she's a woman. And I have links to everything I'm uh, claiming here. There are so many more to choose from, but I'm going to leave you with just one more. If your mother, father, sister, brother, uncle, aunt, girlfriend, boyfriend, significant other, or et cetera, died, only 10 people were able to go to the funeral. Well, that is it, except if you were an elected Democrat politician or a big Democrat donor, then thousands could go. And for some reason, COVID wouldn't attack or infect people there. No, it had nothing to do with that. It has to do, according to the AP, because she's a woman. And it had nothing to do with the fact that she still hasn't fixed the damn roads. No, it's because she's a woman. They don't like her because she's female. And as I wrote in my piece, so much for feminism. Feminism that appears to have been flushed down the drain like a woman's body is her own. And she should have the right to do with it what she wants except prostitute it or deny the government from making her take a chemical. That's flushed down the toilet also, is it not, ladies and gentlemen? No, this brilliant reporter from the AP, Sarah Burnett, writes a piece titled, quote, Whitmer plot underlines growing abuse of women officials, end quote. In that cover piece, Sarah writes the following, quote, while criticism of public officials is healthy and expected in a democracy, Researchers say women are dramatically more likely than their male counterparts to face threats and violence. As more women are elected, the hostility grows, ranging from death threats to armed people gathered outside homes or attacks on social media that go beyond policy positions to include gendered or racial slurs and insults about intelligence or appearance, end quote. Yeah, apparently Sarah don't re- does not remember when Chris Matthews uh, said about... Um, Christie, Chris Christie from New Jersey, he was too fat to run for president. The last time uh, Chris Christie ran for president, I think it was. Yeah, MSNBC's Chris Matthews, who was thrown off of air because he was sexually abusing and harassing the women at MSNBC. Yeah, that guy. Said he was too fat to run. His words, directly. I'm not even using, uh, trying to exaggerate it. He said he was too fat to run. Yeah, Sarah doesn't remember that one. 
Then Sarah, in a stroke of complete intelligence or ignorance, you choose, writes this, quote, women lawmakers who are also ethnic minorities are particularly likely to face abuse, the study found. Among those targeted most often were Representative Ilan Omar of Minnesota and Alexandria Arcasia Cortez of New York, who called out a culture of, quote, accepting violence and violence language against women, end quote, during a 2020 House floor speech after a GOP lawmaker's verbal assault, end quote. So that was a quote within that quote. Now, Sarah apparently didn't know that she pointed out to the socialist Democrat elected politicians who have called for violence and violent language against anyone who is a Republican. Cities and businesses. Not only that, but Omar and Cortez both helped raise money to bail out felon. Sorry about that. I just noticed a little fix I have to do here. Fell out melons. Melons. <laughs> Felons who rioted, looted, committed insurrection, taking over police vehicles, precincts, and laying siege on federal court buildings, and violence against innocent people. Do you think Sarah forgot about that? Or is just completely ignorant on what she writes? Or left that out on purpose? There's more. We'll take a break. Come back right after this. You're listening to me, Rank, on the Live with Rank Show. You're listening to the Live with Rank Show. Appreciate that. 269-441-9595. If you'd like to opine about what we're talking about uh, today, I played that song in honor of Sarah. I, mean, I want to make sure I get her name right. Give her full recognition for that. Uh, where did I put you? Sarah Burnett or is it Barnett? Hmm. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. It's got to be here. Here, Burnett. Sarah Burnett, writer from the AP, who I was telling you uh, what she wrote. And she's basically blaming people uh, don't like Whitmer because cause she's female. Feminism is now dead. I think we can uh, agree to that. Then Sarah points to, as I wrote and stated prior to the break, Cortez and Omar. To point to those two women who've called for violence against people that disagree with them. Republicans, Trump people, literally called for violence. And I have the link there. Who've helped raise money to get felons out on bail to commit more crimes. That's who she points to. And then part of the main point I think she was trying to bring up, or a point, was this alleged kidnap plot. But what I found was very interesting is this writer from the AP, Sarah Burnett, just forgot to leave out the fact that there were more FBI agents and informants than the kidnap plotters themselves she also left out that the fbi special agent richard trask of kalamazoo well now former fbi special agent who was one of the lead investigators and undercover agents was arrested for beating his wife's head against a nightstand and choking her with his bare hands because she complained about a swingers party he took her to Even the Detroit News reported that, quote, the two had come home after attending an Ashimo Township hotel event that the publication called a swingers party. After some drinks, they argued on the way home about how Trask's wife did not enjoy the party. So he tried to kill her, beating her head against the nightstand, choking her with his hands. And the only reason she could be alive today is she... um grabbed him by you-know-what, and heard him battling to take him out of his roid rage. I'm sure he's on steroids if you look at the guy, his roid rage. I don't even know if he's in jail now because I heard the wife didn't want to press charges or whatever. Really. But he was the lead investigator, I think one of two. Now, Sarah didn't mention that at all. 
who would have thought that the Democratic Party would be the ones to destroy feminism? With their stop picking on her. She's a woman. 269-441-9595. That is a piece that I published. It is out there on it. Right now, it's on my flagship station's website. So check it out. Eventually, it'll go up on the affiliates' websites. Do you agree or disagree that it, the Democrats have basically sidelined their whole argument that pen femi- you know, underpinned feminism as well as a woman's right to choose to abort their baby because it's their body? Does anybody disagree with those two statements? Love to hear from you. 269-441-9595. Also, I have not written a a piece on global warming. The last piece I wrote was maybe three or four weeks ago, if I remember. But it had to do with all the products that we use today that is oil-based. And it would all have to be either replaced with something else, if it could be, hopefully at a reasonable price. Unlike gasoline now, we're told it's over $4 a gallon now. I saw it as high as $4 in the southwest Michigan area, 389 to $4. Now, this latest huge increase may have to do with Russia, may not. But I'm sure some of it, certainly some of it, if not a majority of it, is. Again, went out shopping this weekend, saw more products even higher higher, at a higher cost. Again, I was surprised, was at A. Myers. I was surprised at how many products weren't there. A lot were missing. Oil jumped, I think, 12 15 no wait $22 I think it was at 130 over the weekend so that's a $22 increase from Saturday a barrel I mean Friday I think it was 108 It's going to get ugly And if Biden and the Democrats and those who voted for the Democrats because they knew they were going to shut down all our pipelines stop all the drilling If they hadn't done that, if Trump was still in office today, we probably wouldn't be affected. Certainly not like we are today. Because we could have somehow just used our own oil as opposed to putting it up on the world market. I'm not seeing too many people doing high fives at the gas station when they see the prices. And I'm surprised about that because they can't all be. Republicans who are getting gas every time I get gas. There had to be Democrats who voted for this. Now, you may say they didn't vote for this. They just voted for us to stop using gasoline or stop producing oil. They just voted for us to stop being independent when it comes to oil. Well, that's the same thing, is it not? You can't vote and every Vote for a Democrat is a vote to increase gas prices, to increase natural gas prices. You can't vote and then say, I didn't vote for that part. I assume prices are going to skyrocket again with what's on our shelves because of the cost of gasoline and, and diesel fuel. Luckily, we're coming out of... So Christmas, I mean, excuse me, winter. Shortly, we won't have to use the natural gas as much. But I saw a piece again over the weekend as I was show prepping, researching. Specifically about Michigan and global warming. I titled my piece, Michigan must immediately prepare for the sky to fall, say global warming supporters. 
Now, this is Michigan-based. I'll tell you about it coming up right after this. You're listening to The Live with Rank Show. You're listening to The Live with Rank Show. Thank you very, very much for that. I wrote this piece I was telling you about before. Michigan must immediately prepare for the sky to fall, say global warming supporters. And the beginning of this piece, I give a nice little wrap-up of what they've predicted over the years. And as I wrote, how many times have the global warming zealots told us that the earth is on fire and we'll all be dead in X amount of time? The global warming crowd over the last 30 years have predicted the following. And I just gave you a few and you can go through with them, uh, through them. I, I'm not necessarily going to go through with them. Well, let me see. Let's just pick one here. Uh, by the year 2000, children will not know what snow is. Well, that was 22 years ago. Uh, yeah, I guess children do know what snow is because every time a flake falls, schools close. So they know what school, school uh, snow is. They, let me see here. Do, 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 do. 2009, the UK prime minister said we had 50 days to save the planet from catastrophe. Guess he was wrong about that. Oh, 2005, the city of Manhattan would be underwater by 2015. All? predicted by the global warming zealots so now we have predictions from michigan quote-unquote scientists environmental lawyers and industry leaders that the earth will soon be on the brink of no return and i assume be consumed by a ball of fire when i read that i thought to myself what do environmental lawyers have to do with predicting the end of the world Other than making a ton of cash suing people and governments, I do not know. Do these lawyers not realize the amount of carbon it takes to make all of that taxpayer and donated cash they are raking in? Also, what quote unquote industry leaders are they talking about? The ones that make a ton of taxpayer cash on whatever the latest scheme they are running? They tell us Michiganders need to be prepared for, quote, frequent torrential downpours, heavy lake effect snowstorms, flooded homes and streets, oppressive heat waves, crop failures, and more. Now, here's a serious question to all of you. Take the politics and the bias out. Put it aside. Have any of you seen a big difference in weather from when you were a child growing up till today? I don't remember it being this cold when I was growing up. But when you're younger, you don't necessarily clue in on those things. Or your body doesn't get as cold. I'm just being upfront and honest with you. I remember it being not... I don't remember this many very cold days. No. Is it my age, as they said? I don't know. How bad it will get these uh, environmental, quote unquote, scientists, environmental lawyers and industry leaders say depends on how much money governments and people give to them to create even more studies. As well as how fast everybody stops using just about everything in the world and starts riding their bikes and taking sailboats when they want to go across the ocean or the Great Lakes. Now, do these scientists, environmental lawyers, and industry leaders realize what products are made from oil? When they find out the creation of the money they are raking in creates a huge carbon footprint, will they stop trying to scare people to make even more cash and create an even larger carbon footprint? One of those scientists was a U of M, University of Michigan, associate professor, Paige Fisher, who studies human adaption to climate change. Now, yeah, she wouldn't have a foot in the game, would she? She wrote, quote, Michigan is definitely a place where people are experiencing heavy precipitation events And so people are figuring out how to evaluate their houses or deal with their flooded basements or build rain gardens or manage waterways to reduce interruptions from these heavy 
precip- uh, participa- uh, precipitation events, end quote. Do you guys find that to be true? Are you guys evaluating your homes? Are your basins becoming flooded? Are you building rain gardens or managing waterways to reduce these interruptions? Apparently, this U of M associate professor was unaware that our Great Lake water levels appear to actually prove global warming is not occurring. Perhaps she should have read my piece addressing that with all the sources to back up my conclusion. And there's a link to that piece. There are even people who believe that global warming is caused by systemic racism. I have a link to a piece I wrote about it with links to my sources. I reported on two incoming, quote, top White House environmental aides who blame systemic racism, end quote, as the main driver of global warming. I had no idea systemic racism could cause global warming. Did you guys? Now, to these zealots, everything in the world creates global warming. Think about this. If we end all use of fossil fuels, they will still claim that systemic racism is occurring and they can continue to take in the cash and scare people to vote for them. What else is there to say or do other than to show you the following video? which I am told comes from the last meeting of these scientists, environmental lawyers, and industry leaders when they presented their conclusions. So you're going to have to go to WBCKFM.com right now and check out that piece I wrote. You'll see it's, it's a burning ball of fire, the picture of a city being burned. And you'll see that video that I am told came from the last meeting that occurred where all these, I think there's 200, so there's a lot less than before, 200 scientists who came to these conclusions. Excuse me, quote, end quote, scientists and environmental lawyers and industry leaders who make money off of global warming, those guys. Oh, and the lawyers, they make money off of global warming. Oh, and these scientists, they make their living off of global warming. What is a person whose degree is in human adaptation to climate change going to do if there's no climate change? Right? I guess she can work at the cafeteria up there in U of M. And I ended my piece this way. So have a great torrential downpour, heavy lake effect snowstorm, flooded homes and streets, oppressive heat wave, crock failures, and more, end quote, day. 269-441-9595. And again, I wrote this because it's specifically addressing us here in the great state of Michigan. And always remember, not one of their predictions Predictions of no has ever come true. And again, I'm simply asking, take your bias out. I'd like to hear from you guys. You can email me if you want. R-E as an excellent N-K at townsquaremedia.com. Do you see a big difference between when you were younger and today? In fact, today I think there's more snow out there than when I was younger. And I say that because I... I didn't have any days off when I was younger at school. And I know these kids today are having many, many, many snow days. I didn't remember, I don't remember, I should say, this many snow days. And I don't remember it being as cold as it is today. But the global warming zealots will just say, well, there's more snow and it's colder because of global warming. If anything, you've got to check out that final video of that conclusion meeting where they wrote up and, I guess, accepted this 
report. 269-441-9595. Six ways to fix Michigan politics? Well, I'll tell you what people believe they are. Coming up right after this. You're listening to Live with Rank. You're listening to the Live with Rank show. Appreciate that very, very much. I'm asking all of you a very simple question. When you were younger, what was it like? What do you remember? Do you see a big difference between climate today and climate 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago? My difference is it appears to be colder today than it was. I just remember that than it was when I was a child. That could be because as you age, you seem to get colder. And I don't. I remember, I guess, less snow because I don't remember getting many, if any, school days off for snow. And today, they get a lot of school days off for snow. 269-441-9595, if you have a thought. I read a piece. MLive went out and asked... I guess, experts, if you want to call them that. How to fix Michigan politics. Because everybody, I think, is realizing that there is a, we've really hit a breaking point. Much different than 20, 30 years ago, knowing that politics is a rough game, it's dirty. Today, it's just, seems to be filled with so much evilness and I chose that word specifically and so much corruptness and pitting people against each other specifically not just the policies where 30 years ago 20 years ago it was the policies that would pit each other against each other Today, it's the party specifically, or certainly a party, specifically pitting their followers, chose that word too, to hate the voters of people who vote differently than them. So they went out and asked a dozen researchers, elected officials, and retired politicos how to change our toxic environment here in the state of Michigan. And quite honestly, it's everywhere. It's not just here in Michigan when it comes to politics. Well, I I believe you just need to get rid of most of these politicians that are running today or are elected today. I spoke to someone, a friend of mine over the weekend, who I knew way before I was on radio. And he was telling me about his son who a few years ago interned in Washington, D.C. for a summer. And he came back and he told his father that there are a lot of younger people who are not in leadership roles on both sides of the aisle or aisles, whatever ideology they're coming from, that are willing to work with each other and they aren't as my word, insane as these people are and evil and corrupt as they are today. Well, let's hope so. But we have to vote out the old ones, the evil and corrupt ones to bring these people up and hopefully, hopefully, I don't know, that would change. But here are the six themes that a dozen researchers, elected officials and retired politicos thought we need to do to fix politics in Michigan, expand expand Michigan's strict term limits. They say we have the strictest term limits in the nation. And I informed you last week, a former Republican Speaker of the House, Jay Bolger, and the current mayor, mayor of Detroit, Mike Dugan, are working to decrease the amount of time from 14 to to 12 years that a person here in Michigan can run for an office, but it can all be as a senator or a state rep. It doesn't have to be three two-year terms as a state rep and two four-year terms 
as a state senator. Voters voted in that two-term limit for state senators and three-term limit for representatives back in 1992. They are saying the restrictions were aimed at preventing lawmakers from becoming career politicians. But opponents say it just brought up a bunch of negative consequences. A Wayne State University political scientist, Marjorie Sarbaugh Thompson, researched the impact of term limits in the last 30 years. She said that she found that the shorter terms did not fulfill the promises made by proponents. Instead, the legislature became less experienced and less effective. She said term limits have also made lawmakers view their seat in the legislature as a stepping stone to other offices or higher paying jobs. That's always been the case. The lawmakers are more incentivized to focus on their political ambitions, she said. Quote, when you have people who are just here for a little while, they become way more susceptible to getting money from special interests. Lobbyists have a whole lot of power in our state, even long-term staffers who used to have institutional knowledge retire. They move on to other jobs. You have fewer people that are actually know how things are run or remember the issues, end quote. It's all a money game right now. That was one of six. Two is get rid of gerrymandering and hyperpartisan primaries. Not the districts. The primaries. So they believe that the Michigan's Democratic Redistricting Commission would do so. Well, we know that didn't happen. Because we didn't have an independent gerrymandering commission a redistricting commission. We had a left-leaning redistricting commission when two people who said to the board to get elected or get on it to the commission, their independence, and then we find out they're Bernie bros. So they lied, allegedly. Number three, introduce ranked choice voting. Now, I wish that was ranked R-E-N-K choice voting, and I would tell you who to vote for. But that's not what they're talking about. It's R-A-N-K-E-D. Now, some of you may know what this means and others not. This allows you, the voter, to rank candidates in order of their preference. And they say it's gaining traction across the the country. The system allows voters who picked a losing candidate to still have a say, preventing candidates from winning with a small number of votes. So if there's a lot in the primary, usually the incumbent will win because two, three, four people running against them in the primary or her take all and split the rest of the vote up who don't want the uh, person who's been there forever or in office to win. They're saying that this ranked choice voting would fix that. They say it promotes more diverse candidates and prevents candidates from feeling pressure to stay out of a race for fear of splitting the vote with a candidate with similar views. House Democrats introduced legislation last year to allow ranked choice voting in municipal elections. So here's how it goes. If one candidate does not win more than 50% of the votes during the first vote tally, the candidate with the fewest votes is eliminated and those votes are reallocated based on voters' second ranked preferences. And the process repeats until one candidate has a clear majority. What are your thoughts about ranked choice voting? And I'll give you three more that these experts said uh, is needed to address and fix Michigan's broken political system. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to Live with Rank.
Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy.